Welcome back, listeners. Welcome back to another episode of the Lead Well Podcast. My name is Brandon Holland. I am your host, BW Holland32 on social media. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, spe very special episode planned for you guys today. We have a 75 Hard episode. And 75 Hard is a program that we will get into uh, the fine details of it in just a little bit. But first, we'd like to introduce our guest, one of my really good friends who has completed the 75 Hard program. His name is Craig Janey. Craig, welcome to the show. Hey, man. Thanks, Brandon. Uh, listeners, hi, I'm Craig Janey. I serve as the president of Greenfields Church Consulting, headquartered in Harrisonburg, Virginia, in the heart of the Shenandoah Valley. Um, I work with leadership coaching, church growth strategies, and pastor search. I've worked with over 1,300 ministers and over 700 churches in the last eight years. In a previous life, I was the dean of admissions at Chuan University in Murfreesboro, North Carolina. That's where I met your distinguished host, Brandon, right. the town manager. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, during, during my tenure there, uh, it was kind of the renaissance of the university, uh, set consecutive enrollment records, reaching the second highest enrollment in its entire history, over 174 years, uh, supervised a ton of people, uh, 10 full-time employees, 54 student workers, managed a budget of over a million dollars. Uh, that's enough about me. Um, what do you want to know, man? Yeah, so to our listeners, what Craig didn't tell you is how we met is uh, we actually started doing music together. Craig is a phenomenal musician and he, uh, I was looking for some outlets to start playing a little bit more and he needed a drummer. And so it just kind of worked out. So, yeah, Man, those are some good times. Yeah. You know, jamming in, in our, in my home and then hanging out at the coffee shop, which, you know, that's how I met my wife. Dude, you, yeah. were, you were front and center in how I met my wife, which is pretty sweet, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's so cool. It's so cool, man. Hey, so um, to the listeners, so a little bit about uh, the program 75 Hard. 75 Hard was created by Andy Frisella. Um, there's a 75 Hard book. Uh, it's available uh, through Andy's website. I think you can also find it on Amazon. It's sold over a million, over a million copies at this point. Um, but the nitty gritty of 75 Hard is it's 75 days straight of mental toughness things that basically get you moving toward the person that you need to be. Um, so it's 75 days straight and there's these critical tasks that you have to do every day. Uh, 10 pages of reading, you have to drink a gallon of water, two workouts for 45 minutes each. One workout has to be outside regardless of the conditions. And you have to pick a diet, no cheat meals, no cheat snacks, no cheat nothing. And if you deviate from any of these things during your 75 days, you start over on day one. Craig, did I hit everything? All, yeah, all the activities? Yeah, I mean, if you if you miss it, you brine at night that thing and you start it back at one. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Full disclosure, I'm back on day one of phase one <laughs> i was on like day five and failed uh, so <laughs> so back on back on day one so um but about your 75 hard journey man um why why'd you start so one of my friends high school friends uh he lives here and we were you know the best of friends middle school high school um and he moved away our junior senior year um in between then that summer uh, to Harrisonburg and he went to JMU stayed here so when we moved back we rekindled this friendship like 20 years in the making which is wild yeah. uh, so it was in the heart of the pandemic uh, I'm sure he probably was chewing on my ear for a couple of weeks saying hey man you want to try this 75 hard thing it's a it's a cheap download you know we can get in shape together we can do it together so I was like uh it's the last thing I want to do you know I'm, it's it's in the middle of the pandemic I mean everybody's mentals are just pff, pff, terrible. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, I do need something that I can hold on to, that I can control. So I finally relented. Uh, I started on Monday, September 14th, 2020, and Brant and I decided we'd go for it. And so we would stay accountable. You know, mine, you know, 
my workouts shouldn't have been a big deal. I, I like a lot of variety. So I was like, all right, well, let me hit up some high intensity interval training. Let me do some walking. You know, I want to pace myself. I've got 75 days, which crazy enough. I mean, that's just two months and two, two weeks, two months, two weeks. So right. I, in my mind, I'm like, okay, two months and two weeks. I can do that. Um, so the outdoor workouts, no problem. I mean, it's September, it's going to get cold. I'm thinking, man, if I push it any further, it's going to be snowy. That's and what I no did. Thanks. No, <laughs> thanks. uh, so, so I stayed, I, I, I stayed the course, uh, in the, you know, right in the, in the middle of fall, late fall, right before Thanksgiving. So I was like, you know, my cheap meal is going to be Thanksgiving. Uh, I decided go. that, uh, you know, we would do some biking together. He had a really great like road bike. I had a mountain bike. And let me tell you, the slog of mountain biking, when my buddy's got this sweet road bike, just pacing, I'm like, man, I'm struggling. Uh, we would, you know, we would do different workouts. Like he, he would go to the gym. I would do like yoga in my home after everybody had gone to bed. And I, you know, love the moment where I could do Shavasana, you know, just laying straight back and like, Oh, Shavasana for like a minute and 15. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, hold on so i started doing yoga during this too and like man like the benefits were amazing like yeah. i'm not the most flexible person like it wasn't pretty but like i did it and yeah. i needed and you know i never really thought much about it until i heard like david goggins talk about how he stretches for like two and three hours a day <laughs> and so i'm like okay like i can do you know a couple a week or something like that you know man yeah and, and goggins i mean he does everything for two and three hours yeah like, how much do you sleep two and three hours yeah how many uh marathons do you run uh two and three hours worth of marathon <laughs> like, oh, what how many jumping jacks man did you do i did the i was like let me look up youtube i tried it i know exactly where you're going i'm like jumping jacksing with david goggins he's like all right just two minutes i'm like oh, i do two minutes i'm like i've never done two minutes of jumping jacks in my whole life and then it's Dude, like nobody has <laughs> it's like oh it's 25 minutes oh no it's 35 minutes i'm like bro i'm my neck's hurt my neck and my back and it was like that point i'm like all right first uh i'm not working out with david goggins ever again yeah uh, not for this and then uh, I need to find a chiropractor yesterday. Uh, so once I was back aligned, I wasn't like compressed. I felt pretty good, but there for a minute, man, it was touch and go. But back to the yoga piece. Yeah. I mean, the benefits at first, you're like, man, this is weird. Like, oh, I'm stretching, you know, I'm an old, I'm old, I'm an old punter, you know? So the stretching part, like that's okay. But then I'm like, I'm getting strong in the stretch. Yeah. Like, oh, I can like, with my core strength, it's increasing. Like I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Right. Uh, and you know, at, at the beginning, like you're sweating doing yoga. And like, I just would laugh at myself like, man, you're sweating doing yoga. And now I come to find out like, that's pretty standard. Yeah. <laughs> like, Oh, okay. Well, you know, sorry for all the people that I was offending with laughing at myself, sweating during yoga, but I'm part of y'all now. Yeah. But nobody um, can tell me that their favorite one isn't Shavasana. Like oh, that's, no, that's a, yeah. That's silly. Right. <laughs> so um, so what uh, what diet did you do? Uh, my diet was no uh, fast food and no soft drinks. Okay. I thought, you know. Was if that I could, a challenge? Um, yeah, because like Chick-fil-A is like right down the road. Okay. Um, and that to me was like, all right, if I can if I can suppress the Christian chicken palace, right. Like that's mental. Uh, and then like the Dr. Peppers, like, Oh man, I could, I could go for Dr. Pepper, but, um, I, I mean, I just, I didn't have any time because you're drinking so much water. Oh my gosh. Just so much water. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it was, it was good because I wasn't, you know, just shooting down to grab some Wendy's fries just for kicks and giggles. Uh, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't doing stuff like that. So I was saving a little bit of money. Um, and certainly like my salt intake <laughs> plummeted. My kidneys yeah. were happy drinking tons of water. Felt pretty good. Um, but you know, the, the two workouts was, that was, that was brutal. Was, so was that the hardest part for you? 
the two two workouts yeah carbon for me the hardest part was like carving out the time to get in two 45 minute workouts um okay. you know i was i mean i was the teacher for my daughter um in virtual school during the pandemic yeah yeah so like man I, i'd get up we'd get breakfast we'd start to work and you know i'm facilitating that checking to work and my wife works in city government. Hey. And uh, so, I mean, there was no time off. You had no time off. Virtual. What, what, what do you mean virtual? We'll do meetings virtually, but I got to be in the office because the government doesn't shut down. Yep. So, so she's doing her thing and I'm like happy to support her. I'm thankful I'm work for myself, but also I'm a pastor of a church. Um, we were virtual at that point. So I'm like, I'm writing my sermons, recording my sermons, posting them up making a ton of phone calls, social distance visits. <sighs> um, so really my workouts would have to be essentially after my wife got home from work, 5.30ish. Um, and then I'd have to have dinner with my family. And then I'd have to pick up another one like at night. So okay. I, took, I took my girls into bed and then I'd be like, time to go get another one in. Yeah. And usually I would save that one for my outdoor one because I could lock all the doors. I could go out in my backyard, jog, you know, do squat, squats and stuff like that. We have a, we have a terraced backyard. It's, it's fancy. We, we bought the house with it. We wouldn't have put it in, but. Okay. Um, and 33 laps around the terrace is a mile. So, you know, there I am doing, like, doing squat lunges, oh, oh, slogging, uh, you know, doing like, if I get to the, to the top, I'll do jumping jacks or, you know, do like a burpee or something. And then some nights I was just like, I'm so tired. I'm just going to walk for 45 minutes at a good pace, get my heart rate up and that'll be sufficient. I yeah. showed up. So right. some days it's like, it's just about showing up and just getting it done. Uh, okay. The other hard part for me was the photos. Like, I'm like, Oh man, I'd, I'd be going to bed. I'm like, Oh shoot. I forgot my photo. And I'd be like, I'm so tired. Ugh. Yeah looked a mess it's, it's great looking back at those photos i'm like my hair's nuts you know i'm all bundled up because it's freezing but that was all right yeah yeah dude <laughs> and then you know the other the other part that was nuts for me like a couple of times i was just like man what in the world am i doing you know, you'd have like 20 ounces of water left yeah and i'm, I'm so tired and i need to get a good night's sleep because i've got work sermon stuff school two more workouts oh my gosh and i'm like i've got to down 20 ounces of water before i go to bed which that means i know i'm going to get up in the middle of the night i've got to pee right like oh my gosh so anyway but i'm glad i did it like i showed up i there was something i could control in a, in a time where I, there was not much you could control yeah uh, for me that was that was some of my saving grace. I also like vowed not to tell anybody I was up to it. So, okay. so Brant knew my wife knew. Um, I think up until, you know, we were talking about you doing it. I was like, you know, I know what 75 hard is. Yeah. And you're like the third person. And then one of my neighbors was like, man, I see you all the time walking. Like, what are you up to? And I was like, am I getting another workout in? And they were like, wait, are you doing 75 hard? I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, it's a so it's like a, it's people, community. Four people knew, and I'm like, uh, you know, I just didn't want to bombard people on social with like, yo, I'm trying to do this. Like, come on, because I knew they were just they just nobody had capacity to for me to be a one upper, you know. And yeah. I'm also like, I'm I might just <laughs> turn and burn this one. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> but uh, sometimes you know you you I don't know if this was your experience, but. Uh, I'd, I'd have to multitask. So sometimes I'd have my book reading in the, in the coal. I got my glove on. I'm reading my book while I'm walking. <laughs> <laughs> Man. So, you know, so I, I always try to do my reading like right before bed. It helped, it helped just helped me sleep better. Um, but I fell into a little bit of a trap because I was doing it like while it was cold. So I started, I think I started the, the week of Thanksgiving, which was not the best decision. Um, so I, th I got started like that, that Tuesday, I think. And so 
I had, you know, gotten to where, all right, like this one time, like I had to do my outdoor workout and it was just straight snowing. And so, you know, I posted it on social and then the next time it happened, I'm like, I kind of have to post it or nobody's going to believe I did it. And then like, I wish I had never posted it. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. I'm like, man, it's, mm. <laughs> you know, the other part that I liked about the 75 hard is like the day didn't end until you fell asleep. Right. And so let me tell you about how many 2 a.m., 3 a.m. I, I pulled. I felt like I was back in college. Okay. I'm like, oh my gosh, just because, you know, I've got so much I've got to fit into the, to the daylight hours. And then, I, you know, sometimes I'd, I'd work out even after dinner and be like, well, that's my 45. I've got to get another one after this. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm just so tired. So I do, you know, do some of the other things I needed to do. And I'm like, all right, enough time, you know, and then you just, you, you show up, you get after it, you know, yeah. um, you know, it, it's, it's interesting, the community that, that is built, you know, online where it's just a ton of encouragement. People, people want you to succeed. And like, um, you know, I went all the way through it. Like I've, I've got, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for that. I, it, I guess I'm weird. Um, maybe I blame it on my old high school soccer coach, coach Highfield. He, he, he was also my football coach and you know, he was just trying to build mentally tough young men. And, okay. you know, quitting was never an option. We, we used to do these things in soccer called 60s, which, you know, seemed pretty innocuous at first. It's like, all right, you have 60 seconds to run around the soccer field. No big deal. And 60 seconds at first, you're like, oh, gosh, that's, I mean, you're, you you got, you got a nice little pace. And then he's like, okay, well, we're going to do two 60s today. All right. And you have a 60-second break in the middle. Okay, two is no problem. Well, right before we start really moving into the season, we're up to six at a time. So it's 160, 60-second break, 160, 60-second break. And if you miss it, you go again. And, you know, his thing was, we're going to be the best, uh, best conditioned team. And, you know, so after you get the 660s, he's like, all right, then he'll, he'll taper us down. So we'd ask the captains, well, do you want an IQ one or do you want to do all six? And the captains were like, what's the IQ? Let's go. What is it? He goes, one under 45 or six under 60. It was like, I'm right, going to do one under 45. Fellas, pick it up. Less is more. And so, you know, I kept thinking like in my mind, like if I'm going to start this, I can prove it to myself. Like yeah. I, I, I'm not going to quit. I bring up the soccer thing because my freshman year playing on the varsity team, which was kind of sweet. I just had this moment. It was the last 60. It was the first set of six I'd ever done in my life. And I'm thinking, I can't go anymore. Like I'm gassed, like yeah. worse than gassed. And I had this fantasy. We run the, we run the, run, run the width and we run the length. We run the width and then the wind in the Roanoke Valley just picks up and you're basically trying to grind it, but it stands you straight up. And I had this fantasy, like I would just run right off the track, right into one of the subdivisions and <laughs> nobody would ever see me again. And like, <laughs> I just remember being like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And then the a little voice in my head, or maybe it was some of the captains were like, come on, come on. And I'm like, no, that's not where my goals are. My goals are here. So I, I, when I finally decided to put my mind to it, I just did it. Um, which is probably why I haven't started phase one yet. Okay. <laughs> Cause I know like, I don't, I just don't want to fail. I don't want to fail. It. But yeah, I also, I also am, am graceful enough to myself that sometimes like the timing's off and Failing is a part of succeeding. Right. Um, so uh, that, I mean, that I was pumped at myself like, wow, I, I, could, I could do it. I, I trusted myself enough to show up enough to do it the right way, to drink all my water when I just wanted to pour it over my head and say, well, that was good enough. Yeah. Uh, uh, to read, you know, the 10, the 10 pages were not a problem. I mean, I, 
it's kind of what I do for a living, <laughs> sort of. Um, but, you know, in the fast food, like at first it was difficult, but then I thought, well, the only time I crave Chick-fil-A is on Sunday, so I'm straight there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But sometimes like, you know, you do, you, you shovel the driveway of snow and you're like, oh, I could really go for that Dr. Pepper, man. That would feel, that would be great. Right. I'm like, well, you just don't buy it. And yeah. if it's not in your fridge, you can't consume it. So, exactly. So that was another, you know, that was a breakthrough. I'm like, oh, if I don't buy junk food, I don't eat junk food. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, there's a lot, there's definitely a, a lot to this, right? But, you know, it, it seems like it's more, it's more physical, but this is a mental toughness program. So like, you know, you mentioned, you know, having to make those choices and everything, like what did this, what did this do for you mentally? It, it gave me a reminder that I can trust myself. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I, I, if I set my mind to something, I can do it. Um, you know, I wasn't, at the beginning, I wasn't really stressing myself. You know, I would do workouts that would max me out. Um, but I knew that it wasn't like I was, I was running a relay. I wasn't running, you know, I, I wasn't running a sprint for 75 days. Like right. I was, I was, you know, if I could get to the first workout, great. I'll, I'll get to the second. one. If I can finish my 10 pages and if I can, you know, if I can drink you know, a third of the water by midday, I'm good. Like I can do it. Um, and you know, that, that to me, you know, in the middle of the pandemic, like that, it was really the only thing, it was the only thing that I could say, I can do this and I can, that's my outlet. That's my alone time. And, and that, that was, that was me trusting myself again. Yeah, you know, I, I, it's it's wild. So I started this this consulting firm um, in January of 2020. So I'm like, all right, January 2020, let's go. Middle of January, let's let's rock. We're gonna start 2020 off right. I've, I've put some dates on the calendar. I'm gonna be traveling, gonna be visiting churches, meeting with ministers, and then it all shuts down. Yeah, and I'm thinking like I'm dealing with the wow. I just ground to a halt, and people. People aren't going to be paying much for my services. And then ministers aren't leaving their churches for another position, mostly, not like it was. Um, they're, they're just leaving the ministry. And I'm like, oh, man, like that's another. That was something that, that I wasn't expecting. Yeah. And, and so I just decided, well, what my family needs from me is to be the teacher for my daughter. What my family needs from me is to support my wife when she's trying to get, you know, people experiencing homelessness uh, who are presumed COVID positive into hotel rooms. Yeah. And she needs to get them food. Like what I need to do is I need to be there for the people in my church who feel like they are now homebound. Like that for me was a, was a real unlock. Like the homebound in our churches, everybody felt that way in the pandemic. And it was just like, oh my gosh. Like if that's how our homebound feel all the time, well then they need way more of my energy. Yeah. Because now I now I know the isolation and the loneliness and the disconnection they feel. Well, far be it from me, and that's not happening. No, 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 no. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm bringing them communion. I'm gonna hand them the bullet. It's you know, a ownership. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that stuff. Yeah. Because. And, and that for me was a recalibrating of, of my calling. So 75 hard, it gave me an opportunity to trust myself again. And it really was a recalibrating of my calling, you know, reading some articles that I was curious about reading a couple books that I'd wanted to read, but just, eh, I have other things I can do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, it was, it was making time for some of those things. And, 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 you know, I, I joke about, uh, you know, doing some David Goggins jumping jacks. But I just thought, man, there's just a whole nother world out there of athlete. And, yeah. you know, I'm not that. No worries. Like, and that's okay. Yeah. That yeah. is okay. <laughs> that is okay. Uh, 
you know, my friend and I got closer because we were biking together. You know, yeah. we were sharing our lives, like the struggles of our lives. We were sharing some of the celebrations. Um, and that, that to me was like, you know, I, I always say like one of Jesus's most prolific miracles is that he had a solid group of core friends in his thirties. Yeah. Like that's a miracle. Yeah. You know, as, as we well know, it's like, man, like friendship is hard because everybody else is pulled in so many directions. And like, there's a lot of grace for that. Yeah. Um, but, but really, you know, making that time, like, Hey, we gotta, we gotta work out. Hey, how's your, you know, send me the screenshot. Yep. You know, send me that picture. Send me that selfie dog. <laughs> bro, what is your hair doing? Uh, and be like, bro, yours is thinning out, my man. I'm just saying. Uh, and like, but having those times of, you know, we, one day I remember we, we were biking from my home to his home. And as I figured it, it was going to be like right at 45 minutes. Well, it was like 48. And, and we get there and I'm like, I can't feel my legs. I just, I, yeah. I don't know how, how we're going to do it. And he's like, well, we can sit here and read. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, man, hand me a book. I'll read whatever you want me to read. <laughs> we read for 10 minutes and then he's like, I'll take you home. And so he drove me home. Yeah. I was like, dude, did you ever think like we would be like, like high school friends again now, almost in our forties. Right. He's like, dude, he goes, it's been like the best. I was like, yeah. And now our daughters are getting, you know, they're, they're growing up together. Like our wives are super, super friends. And it's like, man, life's good. All because you made this, the decision to, to do it, man. Um, yeah. You know, one uh, final question, I guess, before, uh, before the time runs out. So what would you tell somebody who is, you know, on the fence of whether or not they need to do it? So I would tell them to look at your calendar and figure out when it's going to be best for you. You know, for me, like he was chirping probably in the early fall. And I was like, nah, it's just not going to work just based on just how things were going to pan out. Like I knew there were some dates where there's no way I've got two workouts in me. I'm just not. Yeah. Um, but look at a calendar and usually it's, it's in an off season for you. Um, and then just go, all right, that's when I'm going to do it. Um, and then it becomes the, it's either day one or one day. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the, you know, you will, you don't need to find all the answers and all the purpose. Like you make the path by walking and like some days you'll get into a rut, like go on that Facebook page, say, Hey, who's got a workout. They will surround you with workouts. They will send you links. They will, you know, send you workout plans. Like, Hey, here, do this. It's five sets of pop, 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 pop. And you're like, okay. They're like, it's definitely 45 minutes, maybe 47. Like, oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Um, you know, YouTube's your friend. Uh, but it's two months and two weeks. Yeah. Two months and two weeks. You know, you, and, and make a joke, make, make fun of it, right? Like drinking a gallon of water means you're going to the bathroom a lot. Yeah. But, you know, as I, as I kept saying, like, thank you, Lord, for free flowing kidneys. Like, yeah, this is wonderful. What a gift. What a blessing you know, setting your diet. Uh, it doesn't have, you don't have to do something absurd. You, right. can save that for phase one. you can, you can, you can save that for phase one. Um, but yeah, do something simple. You know, for me, it was like no fast food, no soft drinks. I can manage that. I can do that. That doesn't take a, an extraordinary amount of discipline, but it does take some, um, you know, the two workouts, like enjoy the outside. Like sometimes it would just be raining, just pouring. And I'm like, well, I can either witch about the rain or I can dance in it. Yeah. And so I decided like, all right, people may think I'm stupid and silly and crazy and they're probably right, but I'm going to enjoy it. So yeah. dance in the rain, like whatever. Um, that's, you know, my advice is just, just do it. Just do it. And if you fail, Dust yourself off and try again. 
Yes. It fail forward. You know, don't, don't say, well, I'll never be able to do it. No, get that out of your mind. You will be able to do it. You just didn't do it yet. Right. It's just day one, two months, two weeks. Yeah. Okay, man. Cool. Well, dude, um, anything else before we go? Man, I, I, I'm hoping that our paths will cross maybe in Cleveland. Is that, is that right? I think so. Man, we're going to make it happen. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, man, I, I just, I, I want your listeners to know that if you ever get a chance to hear Brandon play the drums and you cannot pass it up, whether <laughs> it's, you know, going to his church, whether it's he's got a gig and he posts it on social and you're like, dude, I need to, I need to pull up. It's, it's legit. <laughs> Thanks, uh, you know, one, one of the things that I, I, that I pride myself on is being the worst musician in every band I'm in. And with Brandon, it was so easy to be the worst. I'm like, man, I'm like, Hey, do you think you could do this? I'm like, do I think <laughs> so? You know, I'm, I'm grateful for you and for what you're doing on the podcast, what you're doing in, in local government. Um, you know, you're a credential manager, you know, listeners, that's a big, heavy lift. Uh, he's a pro. He, he runs by a code of ethics, man. It you're, you're one of my favorite people for sure. So great. Thanks, for man. You. Thanks dude. And Hey, yeah. um, to the listeners, thanks for tuning in. And, uh, don't forget about the fee. We don't charge or run any ads on this podcast, but we do ask that you share the show. Thank you so much for tuning in and we will see you next time.